Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson on the primary and secondary auxiliary views. In our last lesson, we have seen the methods for the construction of auxiliary views. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. In previous lesson, we have seen the different kinds of plane surfaces. Surfaces of an object which are parallel to the principal projection planes are known as principal surfaces. These plane surfaces are specifically known as vertical, horizontal, and profile surfaces, while inclined plane surfaces are perpendicular to one of the principal projection planes and inclined to the rest of to projection planes. We have briefly seen how to project the true shape and size of an inclined plane surface by setting an auxiliary plane parallel to the inclined plane surface, which means by placing a reference line to the edge view of the plane on the orthographic multi-view drawing. An oblique plane surface is a plane which is neither perpendicular nor parallel to any of the principal projection planes. This plane surface is shown distorted on all the multi-view drawings. We also briefly seen the projection of the true shape and size of an oblique plane surface, tracing the steps of projecting the true shape of a two-dimensional oblique plane. To do so, we need to find the true length of a horizontal line on the oblique plane. Then, projecting the point view of the horizontal line by placing an auxiliary plane perpendicular to the true length of the line gives the edge view of the oblique plane. To find the true shape of the oblique plane, we need to place another auxiliary view which is parallel to the edge view of the plane. Well, students, in previous lessons, we have covered that any geometric figure like point, line, plane, or three-dimensional object can be projected on any kind of projection planes. Those projection planes can be the principal projection planes or the auxiliary projection planes. The location of point is determined by its relative positions with the vertical, horizontal, and profile projection planes. A line is projected on its true length if the projection plane is parallel to the line and it will be projected as a point 
if the projection plane is perpendicular to the line. In case of a plane, a plane surface is shown in its true shape when projected on a projection plane parallel to that surface. And also, a surface is projected as an edge view if projected on a projection plane which is perpendicular to that plane surface. Auxiliary planes are planes which are parallel to the inclined or oblique surface, which an auxiliary view is a view showing the outline of a slanted surface as it appears to the observer when it looks directly perpendicular at the surface through the auxiliary plane. Students, considering that you already know the difference between principal projection planes and auxiliary projection planes and also the differences between the types of inclined plane surface and oblique plane surfaces, try to discuss and sketch orthographic views of the following objects along with the correct auxiliary planes needed to project the true shape and size of the slanted surfaces. Well, go ahead and do that now.
Welcome back. Since the aim of the auxiliary viewing practical technical drawing is to show the true shape of a slanting surface, the view direction must be perpendicular to the slanting surface and the auxiliary plane will be parallel to the surface. Let us see. In case of projection of plane surfaces on an object, the edge view of the auxiliary plane therefore will be parallel to the edge view of the slanting surface. The objects given on the previous activity have slanting surfaces. Notice that all surfaces are inclined plane surfaces which are perpendicular to one of the principal plane and inclined for the rest too. When the inclined plane surface is perpendicular to the horizontal projection plane, the auxiliary projection plane needed to project the true shape of that inclined surface is also perpendicular to the horizontal projection plane and parallel to the inclined plane surface. This auxiliary plane is known as top auxiliary plane and the top auxiliary view is projected by putting a reference line parallel to the top view of the surface on which the surface is foreshortened and viewed as an edge view. The slanted plane surface on the second object is perpendicular to the vertical or frontal projection plane where the surface is viewed as an edge view. So we need to place an auxiliary plane parallel to the line which means placing a reference line which is parallel to the edge view of the plane surface on the vertical projection or frontal view. This auxiliary view is known as the frontal auxiliary view. The final case is when the slanted surface of an object is perpendicular to the profile projection plane where it's projected as an edge view. The auxiliary projection plane which is parallel to the plane surface will be represented by a reference line which is parallel to the edge view of a plane on the right or left side view. This auxiliary view is known as side auxiliary view. Well students, you have just learned about the primary auxiliary views. Primary means main or first auxiliary views. This gives you a hint that there is also a secondary auxiliary views. Let's see. Inclined plane surfaces appear to be foreshortened on standard orthographic views. Foreshortened means one of the dimensions of the surface appear to be smaller than the actual length, while the other one is shown on its true length. An edge view is the maximum foreshortening of an inclined surface. The auxiliary views which are taken from an inclined plane surfaces is known as the primary auxiliary views. The primary auxiliary views are always projected from the auxiliary planes which are perpendicular to one of the principal planes and the auxiliary reference lines are parallel to one of the principal views. At least two principal views are required for most primary auxiliary projections. The secondary auxiliary views are used to project the true shape of an oblique plane surface. Oblique plane surfaces are neither parallel nor perpendicular to any of the principal projection planes. Oblique planes are 
shown distorted on all principal views. Distortion means the view of an object has totally inaccurate dimensions. Technically, distortion is known as lack of proportion. To find the true shape of an oblique plane surface, we need three principal views of the object and also we need to find the true length and point view of an oblique line which lies on the plane surface. Since we have the right to choose which line we should draw, we can draw vertical line on the side view so that we can get its true length on the front view or we can draw horizontal line on the front view so that we can get its true length on the top view. Let's go with the horizontal line and notice that it will be easier if we take one end of the line from one corner of the oblique plane surface on the frontal view. In this case, we just have to project the other end of the line to find its true length on the top view. The second step is to find the point view of this line. To do so, we need to set an auxiliary reference line which is perpendicular to the true length of the horizontal line. The point view of the line also reveals the position of one of the vertices of the oblique plane surface. Projecting the other vertices will align all the vertices of the oblique surface on a single line, which is the edge view of a plane. To find the true shape of the oblique plane, we still need another auxiliary plane, the secondary auxiliary plane. The reference line representing this plane should be drawn parallel to the edge view of the oblique surface and all the dimensions should be taken from the distances between the top view and the primary auxiliary views. This view provide the true shape and size of the oblique plane surface of an object. I hope that wasn't tiresome, was it? Let's take a break doing an activity. Discuss and sort out the differences between the two auxiliary views of the same object. Let me give you a hint. Focus on the auxiliary views than the auxiliary planes. Well, go ahead and do that now.
Well, students, I'm sure that was easy to tell. Since from the last lesson, when we start the projection of auxiliary views for the three dimensional solids, we have been projecting the true shape and size of the inclined or oblique plane surface. But we have not been projecting other surfaces along with the slanting surface of the object. It is not by a mistake, but it won't be necessary since it will be more confusing with all the other surfaces being distorted again. Let us see. Partial auxiliary views only show one face or surface of an object. Only the inclined face is projected on an imaginary plane. Complete auxiliary view projects an entire object on an auxiliary plane. Not only is the inclined face projected, but all the horizontal, vertical, and profile faces are projected as well. But the principal faces are always foreshortened and distorted in auxiliary views. Sometimes, the inclined or oblique surface of the object is symmetrical. Symmetrical means its half is the mirror image of the other half. In this case, we won't need to project and draw an auxiliary view for the whole inclined or oblique face. While projecting half of the slanting face of the object, a center line called center plane is used. Thus, draws a center plane line for the auxiliary view parallel to the inclined face at any convenient distance from it. This center plane line can be used as a reference line by drawing the same center line on the foreshortened view in the middle. Projecting the right distances will help us finalize our half auxiliary view. Remember, using the same procedure, we can finalize the full auxiliary view by transferring distances from the half auxiliary view using compasses or dividers. Auxiliary views of curved outlines are obtained by locating a number of points on the curves. Let's take a truncated cylinder as an example. A truncated cylinder is a cylinder which is sliced or sectioned diagonally. In this case, the horizontal center line representing the center plane line of the edge view, which shows the end of the cylinder, is the line from which measurements are made and transferred to the auxiliary view. Select a convenient number of points on the front view of the inclined surface. Then draw perpendiculars from them to the auxiliary center line. Project the same points to the side view. Measure the distance from the center line to each point and lay off this distance on each side of the center line of the auxiliary view. An auxiliary section is simply an auxiliary view in section. The cutting plane line indicates both the location of the cutting plane and the direction of sight for the auxiliary section. We will learn about this case in the next chapter. Students, you have learned a great deal of concept in technical drawing today. Before we conclude this chapter on auxiliary views along with today's television program, let's briefly revise what we have learned. The location of point is determined by its relative locations to the principal planes. These are above the horizontal plane 
in front of the vertical plane and to the left of the profile plane in first angle projection. Line in projection can be considered as the shortest distance between two points. To project the line on the principal projection plane, we need to locate the two end points relative to the principal planes. Lines can be parallel to any two principal projection planes. Lines also can be inclined to two of the principal planes and parallel to rest one. The true length of a principal or inclined line is found on the plane the line is parallel with. An oblique or a skew line is a line which is neither parallel nor perpendicular to the principal projection planes. The true length of an oblique line is found if we draw an auxiliary reference line parallel to any of the views and project the right dimensions to the auxiliary plane. The point view of the line is found when an auxiliary plane which is perpendicular to the true length of the line is projected. Plane can be two-dimensional surfaces by itself or it can be part of a solid surface. Principal planes are planes which are parallel to one of the principal projection planes. Principal planes appear in true shape on the principal projection plane on which they are parallel with and appear as an edge view to the other principal projection planes. Inclined planes are perpendicular to one of the principal projection plane and inclined to the other two projection planes. These planes appear as an edge view on, on the projection plane on which they are paralleled with and they appear foreshortened on the other two projection planes. To find the true shape of the inclined planes, a primary auxiliary plane is used. The primary auxiliary plane is parallel to the edge view of the plane. An oblique plane is neither parallel nor perpendicular to any of the principal projection planes. Oblique plane appear distorted on all the principal projections. To find the true shape of the oblique plane, we need to find its edge view first. To do so, we need to find the point view of a line on the oblique plane. Draw a horizontal line on one view of the oblique surface, preferably one end of this line should lie on one vertex of the oblique plane. Projecting this horizontal line to the other projection plane will give the true length of the line. Draw an auxiliary reference line perpendicular to the true length of the line and by extension the edge view of the plane. Projecting another auxiliary view which is the secondary auxiliary plane parallel to the edge view of the oblique plane gives the true shape and size of the oblique plane surface. Projecting an auxiliary view which contains only the inclined or oblique surface of a three-dimensional object is known as partial auxiliary view, while projecting the whole surfaces of the object to the auxiliary plane is known as complete auxiliary view. When the slanting surface of an object is symmetrical by nature, we can draw only half of the surface on the auxiliary plane. Slanting curved surface is projected to the auxiliary plane by dividing it into a number of parts then projecting the approximate distances of those parts finally 
joining them together again. Well, students, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Keep on practicing on the projection of auxiliary views with the exercise from your textbook. Teacher, please assist your students on their practical periods. On our next lesson, we will start a new chapter, sectional views, and discuss about terminology and common practice of sectioning. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.